Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcast. Today I'm talking about separation methods and a little bit about mixtures. This is a video that I'm really gearing towards my first year chemistry students, and it's meant to be just a very brief overview of the idea of separating mixtures. So as you may recall, a mixture is a sample of matter that's got two or more different substances blended together. In this case, a lot of our meals, a lot of our food would be considered a mixture. Mixtures are really common, right? So we can talk about homogeneous mixtures where the components are uniformly distributed no matter where we look in the sample we've got about the same ratio of everything and these are sometimes referred to as solutions even though they can be found as solids liquids or gases alloys are a type of solution containing metals they're homogeneous mixtures in the solid phase and there are a lot of different alloys that are commonly used and that you may be familiar with we can also talk about heterogeneous mixtures where the components of the mixtures are not uniformly distributed, where I have different ratios of the components of the mixture at different portions of the sample. But what I really want to focus on in this webcast is the, the idea that we have these substances physically together, which means we can then separate them based on their physical properties. So if you have a mixture of salt and iron, we can remove the iron with a magnet because iron's magnetic and salt's not. So we want to take advantage of this and take the mixture and break it down into its different components. One method we can do to accomplish this is filtration. If we're separating solids from fluids, which might be liquids or gases, we often will do this with filtration. Think about making coffee, right? You've got the coffee grounds, you've got the water that boils, it comes through, it goes through the coffee filter, and we can separate them. This is a technique that we use a lot in the lab to separate solids from a solvent. Um, we can actually do it with gases as well. But in high school chemistry, we're most likely going to be separating an insoluble solid from water. Another method that we might use is chromatography. Chromatography separates the components of a mixture based on solubility differences. So in paper chromatography, the pigments might be attracted to the paper to some degree, they might be attracted to the solvent to some degree, and the differences in these solubilities would affect the rate at which the pigments move up the dye. There are actually a lot of different chromatographic techniques. So that's not my intent here. So we're looking at differences in solubility or how well they pass through a material um, and we can separate them based on those properties. It's primarily solubility. We can also talk about distillation where we're talking about separating the components based on differences in boiling points. One material in the mixture will boil at a lower temperature and it'll boil off and we can collect it and then we can keep boiling the original sample and another component will get to its boiling point and we can boil it off and cool it down and collect the vapor or the liquid in another container and separate them based on boiling points. The last method I'll talk about is evaporation, which also allows us to separate solids from a liquid where we literally just let the liquid evaporate. You might heat it to get it going, but you're literally having that liquid leave through evaporation processes. Uh, so a really common everyday example of this is making sea salt from ocean water. You can let the water evaporate and then you can recover the salt. So the big picture here is that if, if we have a mixture, we can separate the components based on their physical properties. And we can do this through a variety of methods. We can separate them based on solubility. We can separate them based on boiling points. We can separate them based on states of matter. It's all about physical properties and we can separate them if we choose the right strategy. All right, this is a good stopping point. So I'm going to end here.